shall sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth, the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Highly esteemed listeners, welcome to the Oracles of God Radio Broadcast. A biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ, which come your way every Wednesday at 5.30 a.m. on Radio Universe 105.7 FM. Shall we pray? We continue to give you praise, glory, honor, Almighty Father, for your wonderful blessings and protection that have been our portion up to this time. We thank you for ushering us into this brand new year. We thank you for all that you did for us last year. And we thank you for what you've done for us for the past two weeks. And we say hallelujah be to your name. Being faithful God, we continue to bless your holy name and ask for your continual guidance in our affairs. Thank you for the opportunity of this day. Thank you for your words that you are about to give to us. We pray that you all give us hearts of understanding that will be able to ponder over the words and apply them to daily lives for eternal life. We beseech thee, O Lord, that you grant that your technical ability to the technicians that will transmit your oracles unadulterated to your children. Begin and end successful with us in the name above all names. Jesus Christ, our Lord, do we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Highly esteemed listeners, last week we began looking at a new series of lessons that we serve for the purpose of this new year. We want to be advising ourselves from the word of God for good success in this year and forever. We have the topic, the narrow way that leads to eternal life. The narrow way that leads to eternal life. And we took the passage from Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. Where we understood the message of Jesus clearly that he said enter in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there be which go in the rat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life and few there be that find it. Brethren, with this passage, we began looking at what Jesus meant and how this will help us meaningfully this year and forever if we ponder over this message. We explained that Jesus tried to explain from the passage that there are obstacles standing close about in a particular way. And so it is straight and difficult to enter. We also understood that the road that Jesus talked about is a narrow one because of affliction, suffering, tribulation, and trouble. All that Jesus tried to tell us that there are two main ways, one being narrow and one being broad. In all our affairs of life, from the time we'll be born to the time we'll go back, this broad way and narrow way are the only two ways that mankind may face. 
And so as we've entered this new year, we were privileged that God spoke to us and is speaking to us, reminding us the necessity of choosing the narrow way. For the narrow way leads away from death to life. And for a very long time ago, almost nobody found that way. Those who seem to have found it did it for a short time and backslided. That's for just a season. And the word was to find. It means that we need to search diligently, obtain and work to participate in a narrow way. Brethren, we also talked about the wide gates that Jesus talked about. That was so flat, no obstacle easy to enter way. It is a way that is naturally the worldly way. Easy trodden, spacious, smooth, convenient, and it lures to death. We talked about these two. One is leading away from death to life, that is the narrow way. The other lures to death. And many, many, many people it is so common that very long time ago, many have trodden that path for a long time and have perished. Because there is no need for any much effort to go in. It seems to be the state of nature to go in. We explained that Jesus was in effect saying that we should be part of the few that strive to enter the narrow gate. It seems to be difficult to enter and inconvenient to walk on the way while we are on this world. But it leads to eternal life. This is because the wide and easy to enter gate that has attracted a lot of people from a long time ago naturally led them to death and it leads to death. Brethren, we explained also from the passage, especially from verse 20, that Jesus listed some of the things that characterize people who walk on the narrow way. And some of the things we really talked about include that our righteousness exceeded that of the Pharisees. That our righteousness should exceed that of the Pharisees, for the Pharisees always practice outward and formal righteousness as against inward and spiritual ones. They were interested in the people praising them, doing outward righteousness, and why their hearts were far away from what they were doing. Jesus said that is the broad way characteristic. But with the right narrow way, we need to practice inward and spiritual righteousness. From We also did say that if we look at morality, and the commandments that God gave to man, it is also part of walking on the narrow way. And so we did mention that whatever you want others do unto you, do likewise unto them. Mention some of the moral practices and the morality that God expects from man, not by ourselves, but to us it has been subscribed. We also ask not to judge, rather we should be humble, always seeking and walking by the grace of God, but not of our own works. That is example of walking on the narrow way. We also talked about what Jesus tried to tell us, not to deceive ourselves, but we should seek, ask, and knock. In every circumstance, we should ask, seek, and knock the spiritual principles of God that may guide us to be successful in all that we do. And from Isaiah did say that the man does not know how to move his steps. He is being guided by God and therefore we should continually ask, seek and knock. Matthew gave us this narration. That is why it is important that we look at the characteristics on this narrow way and choose that. We said Jesus summarized all this into verse 13 or 14 
of Matthew 7 that we've read, where he used straight and narrow gates as opposed to the wide and broad way. Brethren, we are saying simply that when you read Galatians 5, 19 to 21, we did read last week to understand that another way that the narrow and the broad way system were being emphasized was when God used Paul to write to the church in Galatia. In Galatians 5, 19-21, we have all the characteristics of the broad way listed there. And in 1 John 2, 16, it sum up as last of the flesh, I am pride of life. And we did remind ourselves that this has been the weapon of the devil from time immemorial. And it is still using today. Brethren, we also did say that in Galatians 5, 19-21, we have different kinds of sin that last of the flesh and I has brought about. We talk about sin against oneself, including sexual sins, substance abuse, and uh, we also talk about attitudinal sin against others, where Galatians 5.20 mentions hatred, variance, simulations, rough strife, seditions, and heresies. Then the pride of life also brought about sin against Almighty. Galatians 5.20 talk about idolatry, witchcrafts, mysticism, occultism, atheism, false teachings, and all these that we did mention are abomination to the Lord. If we want to be prosperous this year and have good success, the Bible asks us to run away from such sin. The Bible asks us to tread on the narrow path. For on the narrow path, we'll be able to face ourselves and defeat ourselves. Self-righteousness is earthly, fleshly, and worldly. And so we need to face self and defeat self. After we've entered, the Bible continues to let us understand that we should know ahead of time that it is like swimming against the flow of a river. Christianity and its principles, walking on the narrow way, appear to be like someone swimming in, on, in the sea or in a big river against uh, the flow of the tide or the river. And that is the nature of God against the world. And because the Bible asks us to pray for even our enemies, even our enemies that are our sworn enemies, the Bible says we should pray for them. That is swimming against the tide. Forgiving and forget. He said we should even forgive the unforgivable. The way somebody acted against us, it to us it is highly unforgivable. That is the person the Bible, Jesus is asking us to forgive. That is working on the narrow way. There are some characteristics and actions of people against us that we could see that they are unlovable. To us, in our mind, these are just unlovable. Those are the people Jesus said we should love them. So you see, be honest even in the midst of difficulties. Being selfless and thinking about others, irrespective of what they do to us, are some of the examples of walking on a narrow way. Oh, the narrow way walking. If you are in the world and you look at that, you will think it is impossible. The Bible is asking us to love the unlovable, protect the unprotectable, pray for our sworn enemies, and that is the narrow way. The narrow way is asking us to think of others even more than ourselves. Why? Because he said we should go the extra mile to pray for our enemies. Brethren, if we are abiding by these principles this year, believe you me, you will see the hand of God in all our affairs. For he has assured us that all those who walk on that narrow way, they are successful. When we talk of true success, it belongs to people who walk on the narrow way. We also talked about the beatitude of Jesus Christ 
that it, all the principles you mentioned in the Beatitude are examples of people who walk on another way. We talk also about Galatians 5, 23 that talk about the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit summarize walking on another way simply means have a good relationship with God, have a good relationship with God, worshipping Him as who He is. And not because of what he has even done for you. For he is God. And as our intro said. Let us kneel and bow down before him. Let us roll over. Bow down flat. Before this great God. Almighty. For he is our creator. And all power belongs to him. Having a good relation to God. Will mean saying no to the devil. Or anything that he has not asked us to do. Be it religious wise, worship wise, morality. What of you, by my grace and humility, will walk step by step after him. Then again, Galatians 5.22 also asks us to have a good relationship with others. Good relationship with others, having peace, temperance and all others. Then we also have good relationship within ourselves, our inner selves. Gentleness, self-control. Discipline. That is having good relationship with our inner selves. When we look at this, then we said, oh God, thank you. We might not have known this, but thank you for giving us. As we want to just add a little for today and we we'll continue next week, we are trying to say that there are many people thronging the Broadway. There are many people thronging the Broadway because it is so easy. Why? Because right from the beginning, some time ago, we learned something about the seed line war between God and Satan before Jesus came into the world. And even Jesus is an offspring of the main seed line, and he came to crush the head of Satan. So from time immemorial, the devil has been fighting behind the scenes with God to win people to his side on the Broadway and destroy them. Remember that we studied the seed line promise and war. From the prophecy of God for the scheme of redemption in Genesis 3.15. Where the battle line was drawn, where the devil was bent on destroying all the gold seed line of the woman. That God will use to bring the seed who will come and crush the head of the serpent. Remember how Cain killed Abel. Remember how God replaced Abel with Seth to begin the righteous lineage. We remember how God wanted to use the righteous seed line for his scheme of redemption. In Genesis chapter 5 verse 3. Remember it. And remember how the righteous seed. Was later called sons of God. While the righteous seed from Cain. Was called sons of men. Remember how the devil continued. To influence the people. Of the righteous seed. Lineage through intermarriage. Between the sons of God. And sons of men. Remember how the devil attacked. Every seemingly righteous being of God, why God counterattacked. Remember after Cain killing Abel, how God caused her to be born. Remember after the devil degraded humanity, where God destroyed the entire world, God counteracted by preservation of Noah in Genesis 6 8. Remember how the devil introduced idolatry, worshiping of idol. To the entire humanity. And how God counterreacted and called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12. Remember how the devil caused Sarah to be barren. In Genesis 15. But God miraculously caused Sarah to give birth to Isaac. In Genesis 17. Remember how the devil wanted to destroy the seed line. By using Esau to kill Jacob. However God caused Jacob to flee. Genesis chapter 27. Remember how Israel was enslaved by the tactics of the devil in Genesis 37 and how God used Joseph to rescue them. Remember Israel's apostasy in Exodus 32 and God's patience for them. Remember how Israel's lack of faith led to a new nation that was born that only two out of 600,000 adults that were counted from Egypt to Canaan, to rich Canaan. Numbers 14, 26. 
Remember the apostasy of the entire Israel nation and how God preserved Judah. Remember how Judah also was attacked by the devil and rebelled. And how God had to choose some few remnants. Remember how when Jesus was born, the devil wanted to kill him and therefore kill all the babies from uh, a day to two years. In Matthew chapter 2. And how God called Jesus to flee to Egypt. Remember how the devil tried to divert the Jesus' destiny by attacking him to tempt him in Matthew 4 with the pride of life, lust of the flesh, and lust of the eye. And how Jesus focused and triumphed over the devil. Remember how Jews' false religion attacked Jesus and his teaching. And how Jesus called his people like they are sons of Abraham by faith. Remember how his followers, Jesus' followers, the devil caused them to desert him in John 6, 66. And how God in his wonderful work was able to maintain the faithful disciples in John 6, 68-69. Remember even the family of Jesus deserting him by the work of the devil. And remember how the entire family of the world accepted Jesus. Remember how the seed was killed. In Luke 23, verse 46, and remember how God raised the seed in Mark chapter 16. Brethren, we did talk about to say that it appeared that the devil took every single being on the Broadway and he is still trying to see if it is possible today through threats and through deception. Because by the time Jesus stood alone before the devil, he was alone. Satan had taken every follower, remember, we learned it. In the hours after the betrayal and dissensions, the seed faced destiny alone in order to crush the head of Satan. He had to be alone for what had to be done no animal or man could do. The determination of Jesus to lay down his life is understood in the fact that he alone knew what had to be done in order to deliver humanity from the curse that came into the world through the sin of Adam. The battle line continues, but Christ has given us the victory today. When one gets baptized, he or she joins the army and puts on the armor of God. Brethren, this is the problem. That's why you see a lot of people still walking on the Broadway. The devil has not relented, even though he has been defeated. The Bible says that he rose like a lion, seeking whom to defall with deception, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ that has given us the victory. And the victory is what is asking us to walk on the narrow way. Walk on the narrow way, for it appeared through deception that it is difficult to walk on, and it is swimming against the tide. It leads to eternal life. It turns one away from death to eternal life. All mankind laid in death proud to the coming of Jesus Christ. And that is why the sin line war is very, very important in place regarding why it is so. Today we are understanding why a lot of people walk on the Broadway because it was only Jesus who could face the devil. All oh, everybody was taken. And so it is today that if we don't run to Jesus and listen to him and walk on the narrow way, then we are still on that broad way that is so natural. That is by the time we were born, we, are, we just find the natural way so easy according to the flesh, according to the dictates of the world. And everybody does it. And so let me also do it syndrome. Everybody worship this way. Let me do it this way. It doesn't matter. Everybody behave this way. Let me do it this way. Let us follow the crowd to sin. And, and that has been our lot. Because the devil through deception have been deceiving us. Oh, brethren in the Lord, this year, let us do something differently. Remember, last week I did say that if there is nothing we can do, we can do something. Because there is no way that you want different results by doing the very thing you were doing. That was not producing that result. There is no way. If you want different results, we change our strategy. If you want different results, you do things differently. Let us do things differently this year. 
by walking on the narrow way. Let's free from the broad way, for it lures to death and there is no reward. When we talk of good success, Jesus says, then walk on the narrow way. It will appear to the world is difficult. People will may laugh at you, your friends, but they will turn around and see that you are having that good success. May good success continue to be our portion this year. May our plans and everything be lined out according to the narrow way syndrome. May we continually abide by the words of Jesus that enter ye in the narrow way. For straight is the way and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. But those who pass on the broad way, oh, do not do that. In our homes, in our offices, in our neighborhood, wherever we find ourselves, as individuals, as communities, as churches, as a nation, as a, a, a parliamentarians, as a whoever we find ourselves, let us ponder over this. Please, if we want good success, Jesus had the success and is giving it to us. Since he's the only one that has been able to defeat the devil and is showing us the way, there is no other way we will think that will be successful through success without listening to him to tread on the narrow way. God will in us we shall continue to find out exactly why the assurance we have in Jesus is so assured that when he tells us to enter the narrow way, it is true for he is the ticket of God. He is the, the mediator of God and he is the key to success that God has chosen. No other person. God will in us, we shall look at that. But today we have looked and have understood that really Jesus loves us. And he is asking us to flee from the broadness of the way that is so easy and natural to walk on. And try to enter in the narrow gate. And when we do that, we shall be blessed. It will appear as if we are finding difficulty. But next week, when we continue to study, we will continue to come out with how it will be easy for us because we are not doing it by our own might, but by the power of Jesus Christ who has died on the cross for us and is asking us. He tried on that path and he is leading us. We are not going alone. And so we are successful. The devil has no portion with us this year. Let us say enough is enough. We are no longer going to walk on that Broadway. If we want true success, as the years go by, remember, we should learn to know how to number our days. And the years keep on going. Very so soon, 40 years after the millennial year. Have you pondered over it? Where are we going? What are we doing here? May we rethink and may we flee from the Broadway so that we shall be a blessing. Our children shall be a blessing. Our marriage shall be a blessing. Our work shall be a blessing. Our nation shall be a blessing. Everything shall be a blessing if we will only flee from the Broadway and enter in at the street gate. May God continue to bless us. May his face continue to shine upon us. May we continue to stand firm and use our free moral agency power that he has given us through Christ Jesus' grace that we will walk step by step day after day, one day at a time, after Jesus walking on the narrow way. Once again, this has been the Oracles of God Radio Broadcast, a biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ, which come your way every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. on Radio Universe 105.7 FM. Make a date with that same time, God willing, next week, as God continues to unravel his mysteries through his priceless words. You are warmly invited to worship with churches of Christ all over the country, the pillar of truth, where an unadulterated word of God is shared and God is worshipped in spirit and in truth. You may want to contact us on 024-552-7658 or send us your message to cocradio.yahoo.com. I am your brother Eric Darko. You may also locate us on uh, at Church Radio on Facebook, Church Radio at Facebook. Once again, may you be blessed. May the Lord's face shine upon us. May all our attitude reflect his gladness and his joy. May every activity and step we take be on the narrow way. And may we have good success.
every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, throughout our life. And uh, let us say, Oh God, may your name be praised. Let us kneel down, bow down, and worship Him. Amen and good morning. Let God put us on a trip above the earth, turning into time and space.